Hey, what's going on everybody? And thanks for checking out another AT Improvements video. In today's project, I'm gonna show you how I took this wasted space in my backyard and instead built this DIY concrete paper patio. Let's get into the video. So you're gonna to need to follow six basic steps when planning for your DIY concrete paver patio. The first step is to plan out how big your patio is gonna be and then start your site preparation, which begins with excavation. To determine your excavation depth, what you're gonna to need to do is add up the thickness of the pavers plus the one inch for the sand bedding and your thickness for the gravel base. In our case, we're using four inches. Once you've determined how deep your excavation needs to be and you've mapped out your paver patio area, go ahead and compact the soil using either a hand tamp or if you have a large paver area, it might be worth renting something more powerful from your local box store. So at this point, we move on to step two and I picked up my crushed stone. You could also use recycled concrete aggregate from a local supplier and I used my truck to transport it, but you could likely get this delivered as well. Next, this took a little bit of time, but I had to load all the stone into my excavation to the four inch depth. So this definitely took a lot of time. So as you're establishing your gravel base, you're gonna wanna do some planning regarding drainage. So you're gonna wanna make sure that your paver patio has a slight slope away from the house so that it can properly drain. Um, it's generally acceptable to have about one inch of fall for every four feet of paver run. So spend some time thinking about your drainage and make sure that it's going away from the structure of your house. So once all of the stone has been put in place, go ahead and compact the stone. And the reason for all this compaction is you wanna minimize any settling in the future. So again, using a hand tamp here, if you have a larger area, I recommend you rent something a little more heavy duty. So once you've compacted all of your stone and you're comfortable with the level, it's time to move on to the next step and apply the sand base. So I recommend that you use either concrete sand or mason sand as your paver sub base. And I picked up all my sand from the same supplier who gave me the crushed stone for my stone sub base. So as you can see, I started placing my pavers adjacent to the concrete slab just to make sure that I had it flush and to get an idea of my thickness. But the actual correct way to do this is to use some one inch conduit or uh, something with a uniform thickness all the way through. And, and kind of place it on top of the stone base to create a reference guide for how deep your sand layer will need to be. So you go ahead and apply the sand and then screed it with a two by four or other flat object. And then once you have the one inch across, you'll go ahead and remove that conduit or whatever your reference guide was, and then apply some sand back into the void that was created. So we use that trick for the most part, but to be honest, because our patio is so small, we did a lot of piecemeal work, meaning we would just put one paver down and then adjust the grade around that paver so that the next paver adjacent to it would be level and there'd be no lip. So we just continued placing paver after paver until the patio was done. Um, but we need to go into a little more detail about actually how to place these. So as you can see there, I'm putting one in place and there's a little bit of a lip. So I used a rubber mallet to make the final adjustments and make sure it was level between all of the adjacent pavers. Hey guys, super quick interruption. If you're enjoying this video, it really helps me out if you could drop a like down below and also consider subscribing if you like content like this. Lastly, if you wanna see how I built the fence and the gate that you're seeing in this video, I'll leave a link for that right there. Let's get back to it. I appreciate y'all, thanks. Now, this was a pretty tedious project and we spent a good bit of time going back and forth and leveling everything. So it definitely would have been in our best interest to level everything beforehand with the conduit and not try to go back and make adjustments, but it worked out. So for pretty much every single installation, you're gonna have to make a few cuts. So I found that a wet saw worked pretty well to cut through these for kind of the straight runs. So I made a cut right there with the wet saw against the fence. And uh, as you can see, that lines up pretty good and doing some fine tuning with a rubber mallet. And another trick for, uh, for cutting around things that are really tricky, like that post right there, is go ahead and make the marks on your paver. And then what you'll do is you'll cut the straight runs with a wet saw, just because you can get a more uniform cut. And once you've cut the things you can with the wet saw, you'll switch over to an angle grinder with a diamond blade. And, uh, and that's me taking care of that right there. A pro tip, I would keep a, uh, a hose going with some water to keep the dust down. 
and this will obviously mitigate all of the stone dust that ends up in the air. So what you just saw is you don't actually need to cut all the way through the paver. You can sometimes just kind of score maybe halfway through it and then knock out the small little segment with the rubber mallet. And as you can see there, by using a combination of the wet saw and the angle grinder, you should be able to cut around any of the unique geometries that you come across. Granted, you might break a few pavers, but you'll eventually get it, I promise. So at this point, I cut the small slivers on the wet saw, which made it go pretty easily. And then I put the last piece into place before moving on to the next step. So I decided that I wanted to kind of do a curved geometry just for an aesthetic reason. I thought it might look better. So I made a mark there, as you can see, very imprecise with a stone. And then um, I just kind of got reckless and I grabbed my angle grinder, put my respirator on, and I started cutting along that line, just kind of eyeballing it to, to get kind of a geometry that I liked. So I was running this through, probably should have had the hose going to keep the, tuss, uh, the dust, to keep the dust down. And then you can see there, I didn't actually go all the way through it with the angle grinder. I just kind of hit it with the rubber mallet after going halfway through, and that seemed to snap it pretty cleanly along the line but I did have to go back with the angle grinder and maybe clean up a couple of the rough edges. And once I had finished all the cleanup work on that edge, I went ahead and installed the paver edge restraint. And that's me taking care of that right there. Um, you could just install the edge restraint and call it a day, but I decided to get a little cute and do some kind of landscaping around that edge there. Not sure if I love how it turned out, but basically what I did is I took a geotextile to kind of keep weeds from growing up, and then I ran two adjacent kind of paver edge restraints to kind of house those marble chips. And I went ahead and I planted two ferns. Why I picked ferns, no idea. They could be the worst plant ever. Um, no offense if you're a, a fern person. I just replaced those, uh, which you'll see in the final reveal. And now let's just take a quick reminder look at what we looked like before, before switching over to the big reveal. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I really would appreciate it if you could drop a like down below and consider subscribing if you want to see the rest of the projects in my DIY backyard transformation series. Next week, I'll show you how I built that privacy screen and I'll also show you how I built this couch sectional and the DIY fire pit table. So we got some good stuff coming your way. Again, I always appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. On today's project, I'm going to show you how I took this, this really nasty area in my backyard.